Okay, so the goal for today is try to uh, put in practice uh, uh, the topic of neat finding that we analyzed uh, uh, last week, basically. Uh, so we're trying to uh, uh, imagine a, a type of project and try to plan together the neat finding phase for that project. So in a way, this is similar for your next steps in the lab or what you are going to do with your project. We'll try to break it down from a, let's say, theoretical discussion into more practical workflow um, to, to plan this uh, uh, observation phase uh, and interview process of, of the, for our project. So it's basically, we're trying to ask ourselves, give, given a problem, how do, we, how do we choose how to do the observation and how do we organize the interview? Okay, trying to pick uh, from what we learned last week uh, and try to find <coughs> a solution that is suitable for that specific project. So I'd like <coughs> this drawer to be as interactive as, as possible. So feel free to interrupt, to contribute your ideas uh, or whatever, okay? So <coughs> uh, let's remember that uh, the kind of uh, knowledge that we have about our project at this stage is no more than a sentence uh, that is structured more or less in this way, okay? Where we want to do something, something good, with some target population, with some target groups of users, in a given context, while these users are performing some, kind, some activity that we selected, or some of their tasks, or working on some of their desires or whatever, okay? So I chose uh, randomly one possible project. I try to find uh, something which is different from all of your submissions. And uh, so I don't copy from you and you won't copy from me, but uh, we follow together the same uh, process. And so I imagine I have a project uh, which is this one, formulated in this way. In this way. We would like to help uh, university students, and I chose university students because it's a group, it's a target group that we know well, at least you know well, okay? Uh, within student teams, so not in general for study, but you know that in every university there are many student teams that go for the, you know, uh, the, the car racing or the boats or the bikes, uh, all, all the student teams that you know, the Polytechnico, okay? So we imagine we want to help uh, university students uh, that are in student teams uh, or are being enrolled in student teams. And uh, uh, the idea is try to analyze, uh, to better manage the initial phases of uh, a person, new students, that enters an existing team. So, there will be a selection phase. You know that every year there is a call for students that want to enter the teams and there is a selection process where some students are, are admitted there. This process is not our interest, it's already there, it's already managed huh, by the university. But what happens next? Uh, we have a list of people and that are signing up uh, or, or to our student team. We, we, we need to know them, we need to meet them, we need to understand where they're from, what are their skills, and maybe we want to assign them to different uh, tasks uh, into the student team. So maybe we need a person that deals with communication because the student last year uh, graduated and from last year graduated is no longer there. Uh, we have you know, two mechanical engineers that need to work uh, you know, on the engine or on the wheels or whatever. So the work needs to be organized and we have maybe 20 new people, 20 new students. We don't know them. We only know that they are ranking good in the 
in the list of, of, uh, of, the, of, the, of the applications that we received, but from them, from that point, we don't know how to structure the process. So the focus how here is uh, onboarding, basically. We have these people, and we, we need to integrate these people into the team, so making them part of the team. If the team is structured in subgroups, maybe, to which subgroup they, would, will they be added or inserted? Do we have a, a notion of a mentor, maybe, for telling them about the project? How do they learn uh, what they need to do into the team? So, it's a new, they enter into a new environment and we want to try to understand how we can help in this process. Helping, I, I would see two sides here. One is the team, team leaders or the current, the existing team members that need in some way to receive these new resources and to integrate them and also from the point of view of the new, uh, new students uh, that are being admitted. So, and they, of course, have different points of view. Hmm? So where is this project focused more, uh, we will discover it. Hmm? So this is a, a moment. You see that it's not the... Uh, um, among all the activities related to student teams, uh, you may have then the recognition of the credits, uh, do going to the competitions, uh, uh, you know, um, knowing other teams in other universities. There are a lot of dynamics, a lot of activities. We chose just one, okay? So even in, in your project, you have, for every, any topic you choose, there is a, a long workflow, say, a long set of activities. Let's focus on, on the core, or some of them. They may be the core ones or the more interesting ones, okay? So we don't need the, don't try to cover everything. That's my message. Select one part and try to, to study that and to understand that better, okay? Okay, so this is the starting point that we have. From, from here, it's all blank. We need to fill in these blanks. And uh, first of all, try to understand better what the project is about. And in particular, understanding better means uh, describing, analyzing the target group uh, and uh, the activities. So right now, the target group is just here. Five little words. We need to break it down. And also the activities is uh, manage the onboarding phase, and we need to be more specific about that. Just to define the goal better with a new level of precision. Then we will start planning the activities. But first, uh, uh, let's specify it better. Okay, so target group or groups? This is the first question. Are we targeting one specific group of users, or there are many different groups of users that are, have different needs or different points of view about the activity? So, um, I see two groups here. No, I already mentioned that the existing members of the team and the new members of the team. And I think that they have different points of view, different needs uh, about this part of the process. Okay? Uh, so I would say that the groups uh, are maybe existing team members and new team members. Hmm? It's a, an easy distinction. And for them, hmm, there will be different 
functionalities probably in our system. Uh, existing teams, mem team members, uh, uh, we assume that they've already been working together. Just we, we, uh, we, we, we need to try to figure out or to make up in our mind uh, one picture of a real person. Okay? What are the characteristics of these people? Just to understand better what they need. Hmm? So they're already working together. Maybe to do we need to involve all existing team members or just the team members with some responsibility in this onboarding process? So that's a question, no? Uh, it may be you have a team of 25 people, but uh, in the first phase, uh, maybe there's a team leader and maybe the leaders of the different subgroups, uh, they, of course, need to be involved, uh, but do everybody in the group uh, need to be involved or is interested in, uh, in this phase? Pro probably not. I see from, I'm trying to decode from your faces. So maybe the, tar uh, the, the existing team members are not so important as a target group. Mm -hmm. uh, More important would be uh, team leaders and uh, say group leaders. I'm assuming that a team is split into groups or areas or topics. I think those are the people that actually will have an active role in this onboarding process. So it would be a very small group of people. Okay? So it's better to be more specific. No? It's easy to write something, but if we reason about it, we find that we can, if we can narrow the target group or make it more specific, it would be better for, for the following. Just to imagine, okay, this group of uh, team leaders and so are probably, how many will they be? Five, six people. I don't think we can go up to 10 people and have a good management structure for a team of people. It's too many. Hmm? So we imagine that there will be, oh, then of course we have maybe 15 different uh, student teams, okay? But we don't care about other student team. Inside one team, we have a structure like this. There's no interaction in this phase between the different teams. So maybe we can be more specific for one specific team or so just. And the new team members are new students that were not previously in the team, but they expressed some interest. They answered the call and they were selected. All of this is in the past. Do we know something more about these people here, this group of people that can be useful for building their profile? Oh, that, sorry. They are? University, yes, yes, yes. They should be university students, yes. Of course, all of them are university students. Uh, we have probably some little information about them from their application, so we know what degree they're studying, maybe what is their, in many cases, you have to write a motivational letter but in general, uh, we can assume that they, they didn't work in the team before, so they are new to the team. Hmm? Don't know the specifics of the team. 
for its uh, activity. Yeah. Hmm? Okay, I know they're building the bicycle, but okay, how do you organize the world? What are the technical problems? Uh, what are the challenges they are going? I don't know yet. I, I cannot, a new person doesn't have all the information. They had some information about from, from the website probably or for talking with some people when they applied, but then it's a, it's a very shallow information they have. Okay. Uh, so we, I think we can decide at this point that this, uh, the first group is not relevant to us. They will involve, of course, because these new team members will work side to side with, with them, so we'll get to know them. They will get to work together. But for the moment, uh, for the onboarding phase, probably the activity lies and the responsibility lies more on the team leader rather than all the members at large. Okay, so we may decide that these are not part of our targets. They are there, they play a role, but they are, we are, no, we are not going to investigate their role because we still, maybe the feeling is wrong, but at this moment we still, it's not so important to support them, yeah? Okay, so what you're saying is that uh, there may be some groups inside the team that are more critical than on resources. They are low on people, okay? So in a way, they will try to attract more people to fill those positions rather than other groups. Uh, um, yeah, I don't think it's a characteristic of the users. Yeah, we are trying to define the, the profile of the users. They're more uh, characteristic of the task. Huh? So we will note this in the activity, okay? So let's write uh, a note, just not to forget, uh, uh, group, uh, uh, some groups uh, more critical than others. Three people, then others. Okay. Are there any other criteria for at least the new team members, yeah? So you need to split them by specialization, you say. Okay, so you want to understand our motivation, I would say, or not. O okay. Um, so that would be interesting to, uh, to understand what the, those people are going to, uh, let me try to rephrase that, uh, what these people, these new people are going to contribute to the project and what these people are trying to find out from the project, okay, for themselves. So they want to, maybe there's a strong component on socialization, socialization or maybe there's a strong component on technical challenges and people are, of course have a mix of these two and what this so this of course something that we want to discover i agree it's not something that we can plan ahead uh, or it's not something that we can offer the selection on so the selection is done but just by the score of the, of the exams and you have to pick the people that uh, are in the top list so it's not we don't have we don't have control over that where we can exploit this information uh, later on. But we cannot, okay. 
uh, I can try to summarize it maybe in for the social for the social aspect or technical challenge. for getting the extra credits, always nice. Very dangerous with people, just for interesting the credits. For traveling to challenge locations, etc. okay? So we may, can imagine that in front of us, we have people with different mindsets. So maybe as a team leader, I'm a very passionate about the technical problem, but I should recognize that when I talk with somebody in front of me, that may not be their first priority. Hmm? And so if I try to split them just in the basis of their, okay, you are a computer engineer, you are a mechanical engineer, and so on, maybe hmm, it's not the best way. Hmm? So this is an important distinction. Do we need to make any distinction between I don't know, Italian and international students? Does it make a difference in the team building process? Do we need to make a difference between undergrad and graduate students? Laurea and laurea magistrale? Bachelor and master? I don't know, hmm? but I try to analyze the landscape of students and find this kind of uh, question to us. We can mention it, then maybe we can decide it's not important. But for, but for our observation and interviews, that we say that it's uh, Italian versus international student. And uh, bachelor versus master student. Uh, Italian versus international, I think, is a, a very weak distinction. Because, of course, there's the issue of the language. But for me, international is too wide, okay? Uh, the word is very, not, it's not uniform from this point of view. So what is different between these two types of students, apart from the language, okay? So if the team has a good say, proportion of international students, uh, probably everybody should be able to work uh, in English or in some sort of English like, like we are doing today. Uh, but probably another, and for, this is probably the first thing that comes to mind when you, we talk about international students. But there's also another dimension here which is hidden, the timing. Some international students are only here for a double degree for one year or for Erasmus for six months. And so what they will be have a more limited participation to the team in time because they need to go back. So this is maybe no, an Italian student is here once it isn't on the team, it will stay until the end of the studies. It will be renewed year after year. But uh, and, and foreign students, uh, maybe I only have some limited time here. Mm -hmm. So maybe it's also another distinction. Maybe the reason why we care about the difference, huh? other than the language. I don't know. Hmm? So maybe, um, Visiting students, double degree, slash Erasmus, and uh, all the other programs uh, with limited time in Italy, in Polytechnic. But they probably need to be assigned to roles that are more productive from the day one and can deliver a result uh, in a shorter time. Okay. 
in, in planning the observation and the interviews, if we feel that some of these categories are relevant or may be relevant, because in some cases we don't know, uh, we don't know yet, we should organize the interviews and the observations separately for the different groups. Be sure that we include some international students. Be sure that you include some bachelor and some master students. So in, in the planning of the observation phase, we should plan to be able to observe all the different subgroups. Then maybe we can conclude that there is no difference, okay? But at least we tried to spot if there were any. So right now we are doing some sort of brainstorming of different possibilities. And if you brainstorm enough, you get a list of 50 different names. I didn't mention male or female students. I don't think it's relevant, but maybe it is. Engineering or architecture or different uh, spe uh, degree specialization, are they relevant? Uh, maybe they have a different... Uh, Many differences are included in this uh, sentence. Okay, why are you there? Okay, uh, why did you ask uh, to join? Okay, so I think that in this phase, uh, what we should have is a picture in our mind of different people that could be representative of the different groups. We come back when we plan the observation, how to, which of these, let's say, differences we feel they are important and which, and so they should be considered in the observation. Um, okay, is there any other information that you feel is missing here for understanding? Do we need to uh, analyze the location of the work. Are these people working in presence or mainly, or there's somebody who prefers uh, or needs to work uh, online? Is working online allowed in, a, in this team or not? It's a question that three years ago would have made no sense, of course. We wouldn't even have thought about this, but today, maybe it's relevant. Maybe we decided, okay, no, the activities are in presence, or, or maybe there are some activities, I don't know. If you want to curate the social networks, do you need to be there in the, in the workshop where they are testing the wheels? Or maybe yes, for, for, for taking a photo, but then. And this also is, uh, is linked to this uh, uh, limited time in Politecnico because uh, of, of logistical reasons, okay, you, you, are, uh, you are not here, but you can still be able to work. So this, of course, uh, it depends on the, um, on the team leaders. Or, or the team. Okay, do we allow people that would help us, but they cannot be present at all times or can only be present very seldom? So it could be another distinction, working presence or online. It's easier to make groups by dualities, okay, making different questions, yes or no, and so you are you in this group or in this other group. Okay, so I think we have a, a picture of, of the possible users. And uh, let's try to understand better the activity. We said the onboarding activity. Okay, the activity, we, we try to summarize it with the onboarding. So what does, um, what should we do here? What this activity contains? We don't know the details yet, we still have to plan for the details. But I think that uh, 
this activity needs in some way to let us know the user. So, in a way, how do we know them? Well, we'll, we'll decide that. I don't know. This will be part of the design of the project. But at least uh, the onboarding should include the knowledge. That's, that's why the, the noun, not the verb. Gaining the knowledge of the new skill. This is part of the process. So in the activity that we are going to observe or to investigate, uh, one of the questions is, how do you get to know these new users? Are, we, are you throwing a party? Are you making uh, interviews one by one? Um, okay, maybe different teams have different strategies, and we'll try to understand which strategies are currently applied and which work well, and which work don't work so well, and so we, we can try to improve them. And uh, the other point is, of course, uh, uh, the, um, the final point will be to assign students uh, to roles, uh, groups, uh, tasks, responsibilities, or whatever. So at the end of the of the onboarding process, not just of the first uh, interview, but at the end of this process, everybody should know what is their role in the team. Okay, from next week, I will come twice a week, work with the, these other students on this part of the project. Until we get there, everybody is assigned to some task, some group, some uh, activity. The onboarding is not complete. People we are still hanging around there and say, okay, I'm waiting to know what I should do. So probably this is the last, uh, the final point of this activity. And uh, Maybe it's not really defining because assigning it to students means also knowing or creating links, introductions. Uh, with, the, let's say, the, the group with current components Components of the how to say of the group where they are, where you are going to work. How do they do? We, do they call it? Uh, they call it uh, groups. We don't have. A, um, okay. Yeah, but it's so target group is uh, is everything. Um, uh, so a team is split. Uh, splits its activity, its activity into subgroups. Uh, Say okay, of the subgroups uh, where they are assigned. Hmm? So once you decide that you are going to work on the on the dampers, for example, of the machine, okay, these are the three guys that are working on dampers. So you can get in touch and start working together. Because this assignment could be a top-down. So somebody, the team leader decides, and then you get this new person. And say, okay, who should they talk to tomorrow? So this next step. Or maybe this assignment could be a bottom-up process where people go in different groups and say, okay, I think I can work better over there. Okay, and so maybe in this case, the knowledge of the people is, is was done before. Depends on how the process is organized. I can imagine different teams working in different ways. Uh, this observation is, comes here. Okay, when I'm assigning people to the group, uh, I should not only take into account uh, what the new students want or would like to do, but also what the team 
needs more for its proper balancing or functioning of, uh, of the different roles. So there should be, of course, some, some kind of balance. Otherwise, it would be very easy. Everybody just ticks off where they want to go, and we are done. That's why I make it complex, because there are a lot of factors. Um, I think there's a step in between, maybe, of, um, I, I'm thinking of at least two steps. Maybe you can think of more. One is uh, uh, creating uh, socialization opportunity. Okay, you are, now we are part of the team. Let's get together and know each other. Apart from being part of a subgroup and knowing what kind of work you have to do. Okay, that's the ultimate goal, but first of all, we are a group, okay? We need to know each other, so how do we do that? When do we do that? At the beginning, just as a welcome moment, or at the end, uh, where we can do the introduction about, okay, he is going to this group, she is going to that group, and so on. What is the best way? I don't know but probably it's one of the activities that we should plan. Without that, uh, probably the onboarding cannot be considered complete. And another probably topic which is linked to assignments uh, is uh, um, understanding the skills of the new members. So before doing the assignment, uh, of course, you can gain the knowledge from a personal point of view but there's also the, okay, you are a good person, but you are very bad at programming. So I will not put it you there. And so on. Well, maybe it's a sub point of gaining the knowledge. Hmm? What, what did they write here? So Socialization. So is there anything more that you see necessary before you can declare the onboarding to be complete? So from the moment we have the list of students to the moment that it's the, say, the new people will start work as, as a part of the team, do we need to do something more? Didn't you, you have experience with the, with the student team? One, two. So did they miss something? Did they have a, a proper onboarding process? Then let me you are talking about the selection process. You are doing interviews for selecting the students. Okay. So the is this a be, say before onboarding with the, with the selection itself uh, that already includes some interaction between uh, uh, existing members and. Uh, um, but okay, you said it at Japanu, right? Okay. But it actually doesn't follow the, the call of the Polytechnic, right? They have their own onboarding, pro their, their own selection process. The schedule and the assignment. Um, okay, that would be... Uh, um, the dynamic where the current group uh, that organizes the selection for new members is more for uh, student association, not student team. Okay? They are slightly different. Association has their own rules about, uh, uh, let's say, 
uh, their members, the new membership and so on, a team is linked to, uh, to a color, the official color of the university. And so they, the people will be probably, uh, you can uh, probably you can exclude some people by doing the interviews, uh, but uh, you cannot just pick, okay, this I want this. No, it doesn't have any, enough scores or credits, uh, and so they are not in the, in the, in the official list. Uh, but yes, so I try, uh, we can say that this part uh, is, of course, in knowing, getting to know the, the, the person, and so one task will be organizing the interviews, if we do interviews, and maybe you are saying, uh, um, including the help, All, of all current members. Okay, so it could be before the selection or after the selection, you can, uh, it's, it's problem to, it's a tactical problem, say, to organize that. Yeah? Yeah, can be done generally at the beginning, and also, uh, so, the, so I just repeat for the recording, sharing common knowledge. So what, so, mm, ensuring that the new members uh, will have, in a short time, possibly, the knowledge of current members, maybe about the team as a whole, and uh, more specifically about their role and their technical at the team level and at the uh, subgroup level. Where they need to, of course, have more details about the stuff. And this can be somebody called trained. Sometimes it can be called training. It's a form of training knowledge sharing or training or knowledge transfer. It may be formal, so we organize the first two weeks of training every Thursday evening. Or maybe, okay, this is a link to the Dropbox where you can find everything. And so, help yourself. Or a mixture of the two. So, of course, there should be some training plus some uh, documentation plus I don't know what other techniques yeah so you get to know the current people and you get to know the current knowledge to be integrated okay so so far we didn't uh, plan anything concrete. We just try to understand better the goal of, of our work. Okay, uh, next step is trying to plan. So I found this document which is uh, easy to read and uh, very practical. that will open, okay, it is called what to do in need finding. So it's a practical guide that will help us to choose uh, what to do next. So what we want to do in, a, so this is a, an example of observation, so the, the, the little guy is, is eating something and the other two are pointing their eyes, uh, so it's very uncomfortable, but uh, um, the, this, um, document uh, gives you an overview of how to organize from the practical point of view. For example, observation. Uh, in the case of observation, what, when, how, and gives you the specifications of the, of the specific task. Okay. Uh, user interviews, uh, for example, they tell you that you can to lead user interview, user interview. So interviewing key users, important users. 
okay? The leaders. Uh, they're calling also fanatics, so the ones that are more enthusiastic about uh, the, the system, the feature, the project. Mm -hmm. And uh, you may have experts to interview. So different types of, and for these different types of users, probably the interview should be different, should be customized with that, what you should expect uh, to get different types of information from these different types of users. Um, you can do camera studies. So putting some video recording and observing people from the other room, not from inside the room. You are more detached, you are less invasive. Um, or the next step would be provide a camera to the subject itself. So he can record himself. They can record themselves as they go. You can plan a survey, I mentioned last time, one-to-one -one interviews versus online surveys. Uh, history interviews, process mapping, these are, these, are, these are all tools that are slightly different and uh, this document help us uh, uh, say to, to choose. You know? um, This method is, is really interesting, the 5 Y interview, especially if you are doing a one-to-one -one interview, okay, and you want to understand uh, how people think or what people value more. Uh, you ask uh, why repeatedly. Okay, saying, uh, what is uh, your favorite beverage? Why? Why is that? Uh, and uh, they arrange for something and you ask why for that uh, answer and so on. Trying to, the idea is try to go to the, to the root cause, okay? So why are you here uh, in this, oh, okay. Um, why did, sorry, let, let me phrase in a, in a neutral form the question. Um, what uh, is your interest uh, in joining this team, for example? Okay, my interest is, uh, is uh, uh, working on, uh, on some technical problem. Yes, what, uh, what is interesting for you in this technical topic? Oh, that I can put together some, some skills that I had, uh, but uh, okay, what, uh, um, what kind of skills or how do you think uh, you can uh, use those skills in this project? Okay, these are you asking uh, why directly is a bit crude, okay? But you can try to rephrase the question by taking your direct answers and asking for more. Okay. So you can say in some, some, some way until there are sub superficial answers and see what's inside, okay. really. Um, of course, uh, should, should be careful to, to maintain, but in this context, a friendly environment, student versus student, so it, it can be done, so we can understand uh, the, the real reason. Mm -hmm. um, cultural context is probably not very important here in this context. But if you need, uh, there are some example questions or lines along which the, the interview may go. Um, need exploration interview, an informal discussion, uh, when you want to get deeper insight into the need. So this is something that probably we know we want to do at the second step. We have a, a broad idea of the needs and then we go uh, further. And so on. So these are the diff many, many different possibilities, let we start maybe with some, uh, we want to do some, plan some observation and, and an interview, okay? So about the observation, the document tells us what? Viewing users in their behavior in context. So the idea is before planning uh, how to help, uh, 
process, let's observe how this process is currently taking place. When you want to see users in their element and learn about their experience. So let's be specific. Hmm? In our case, an observation, what? What are we observing? Um, so we imagine before, say, designing our project to observe a current uh, onboarding process in a current team. If it happens tomorrow and next week, it will be happy. Otherwise, uh, maybe we try to remember what happened last time. So we do some sort of historical observation. Of, or we interview people who did the observation before. We are losing a lot of details, but it's better than nothing. So what uh, is uh, a follow the steps? Of an onboarding process in a team. It can be uh, let's say future or past onboarding process. In the case uh, when in the case, uh, if it's future, it's okay because uh, uh, the next, uh, the next uh, team, uh, uh, let's say, call. In the past, uh, we can do the observation when we want, we, when we are not really observing, okay? But we are trying to recall what happened. Okay? So not, no, we cannot always trigger the event that we want to observe. We want to observe, uh, I don't know, the volcanoes erupting, okay? We cannot decide that next uh, Tuesday it will happen. So we must observe what happened last time. Hmm? So the past, we need to recall information from last time, last uh, call. And of course, we see we need to use different techniques according to the context. Uh, who we want to observe, so who are the people we want to talk to, I think uh, at least a test, le a test leader has at least some students, some new students. Or maybe also some uh, subgroup leaders or some existing members do we need to observe all of this or, or all, all these different students or we can only do some of them I think the point of view of the team leader is important the point of view of the new students is also important. So you get a fresh, let's say, member say, okay, do you remember last year when you were on board? Let's tell me what happened, okay? So it's important for the point of view. What were, were you anxious? Were, uh, did you get all the information you needed? Uh, and so on. And also from the team leader that did the interview that, that, that for maybe, as, as you mentioned, they, uh, the more different problems, like, for example, that of scheduling an organization and not, uh, from, um, maybe they're too focused on the organization rather than on the content. Uh, if, the, if the existing members were involved in some way, it's good to see them, to see what they're doing. So on. Uh, it depends on the budget we have, the time we have. If we don't have the time uh, for observing the all or, or interviewing or contacting all these people, then at least probably the test leader and uh, the new students should be more important. 
give us priority. We, we need to be prepared to make choices, to make cuts. It would be nice to, but we, we don't want to finish in two years. So let's try to iterate, maybe. Let's start with a very short moment of observation, get some information, and maybe we can spend, maybe next week, one more day or two more days in doing some extra observation on some points that came up at the first round. Don't think you can uh, gather all the information at the beginning. It would be very expensive. Hmm? So find uh, let's, it's good to find all the alternatives, but at the same time, let's get ready to say, okay, but the, the important ones are these two, or these three, or these ones. The rest, uh, okay, maybe it can, can give you uh, more information in a second step. Um, where are we going to do the observation? So, okay, there's another al alternative here. Um, we can, if we are so lucky that there will be a future onboarding, we can observe following the people, okay, where they happen. So if it's a future, follow the activity. Uh, if for, from the past uh, we can just uh, recall from memory or replay it. In a labo uh, lab, sorry, lab setting. What do I mean? I gather the people who went through the onboarding and they organize a role play for them. Everybody comes here in this room this afternoon and let's repeat, let's play out the onboarding process. You can do that with the people that already went through that last year with the same roles or you can do that maybe with different people, with different new students that are just playing the role of new students. They don't need to replay exactly what they did last year but they, they play the role, like they act like a, a pretending to do the onboarding. And you see their reaction. Okay, so the same people who really did the onboarding last year, so they already know how they work, they repeat it here. They will change something, of course, they will not be re uh, repeating word by word what they did last year. It will be much shorter because we, we try to pretend everything happens maybe in, in a couple of hours. But then you have the opportunity of asking questions. Okay, oh, so you, last year you did this. Uh, do, how do you feel there? What was the problem? What was the question that the interviewer didn't ask you or something like that? Hmm? So, like we said last time, the human memory is not very re reliable. So if I ask you exactly what were the steps, what did you do last year, you will tell me something, but it will not be so reliable. It's better maybe to create, simulate an onboarding with the people that had the experience for, of doing that last time. It could be a strategy. It's also less expensive than observing a future activity of onboarding because that will take several days and several people and several interviews. There are no strict rules here. We know the goal, gather information by seeing what people did and why people reacted in some way. So last time we were discussing, we were, let's say, praising in some way the observation on the place, okay, on the workplace. So you go there, you see the real situation and so on. But in this, case, in this context, it would be, I wouldn't say impossible, but very challenging. It's better to recreate the, the opportunity in, uh, in a simulation, and we still get some information, which is better than nothing, or... Hmm? So if I had probably, after you know, analyzing the alternatives, probably I would, prefer, I would prefer this one. That's a good, good start. And if I'm replaying it, so it will be simple to organize, 
I can involve more users, more types of users. Means that instead of inviting five people, I will invite 12. Maybe I will do two groups for comparison. Two rounds, okay? Um, so then the how is uh, uh, the, so the protocol of, of, of uh, observation. Do I just uh, let you do your job, do your interview, do your, and I watch? Or remember, the other alternative was be part. Do I play the role of a new student? Or do I play one of the roles? Or do I fit with the interviewer or the, with the team leader? Do I fit with the students? Do I interact or do I just observe and then ask questions afterwards? If we think of replaying in a lab setting, probably I would uh, just observe and ask questions at critical points. We are, in a way, collapsing a week of onboarding into a couple of hours, so there will be probably stages. Stage one interview, stage two, get a uh, you know get to know party and so on. It's okay. Let's try to you know say organize the time of the trial, trying to represent the, all the different moments. So I would say observation, pure observer, and uh, uh, questions after each phase. And then uh, timekeeper for ensuring uh, all stages are um, played in the allowed time. So if we see how, when I see how the interview is going, we can stop it. Okay, that's okay. And then let's try to move to the to the um, you know to the discussion about. Uh, how do we assign the people to the group? And so I just change the part of, like the director of a movie. Okay, let's stop the scene. Let's try to play this, this other part because I already got enough information from this. Otherwise, maybe it gets too long and we cannot sit, sit here for eight hours. Time is very critical in all of these activities. When you have people talking, uh, time is very hard to manage. So what we are trying to do here is to get more or less what we learned about observation and try to build something that will work in this specific case. And probably will not be one of the, say, official combinations from the slides uh, would be a mix of them because it depends on the context. Uh, on the other hand, uh, if we wanted to organize an interview, so there was one possibility, okay? We need finding, since this activity is already known, is already existing, this is the, the point where we can do an observation. People are already doing that. So first of all, let's observe, let's see how they are doing. We get some information, will be mainly qualitative information, In the, in the document here at the end, it will tell us if you find uh, something while you're observing, try to spot something interesting. Something that's okay, you, you feel there's something nice here, you, something you didn't think about before, uh, you found something surprising. Uh, People do something unusual, unexpected. Uh, there was some maybe contradiction at the beginning, but then you understand why. Uh, it's trying to understand uh, the 
mental processes of the users while, while they are doing this task. At the end, uh, you don't need to write a long report or uh, 300 pages, uh, but in your mind as a researcher, you should be comfortable to speak for the users. I, I understood what, what the users are doing and, one day, and why they are, using it, they are doing that in this way, that I could play the role. I could speak for them. I could walk in their shoes and anticipate or understand what they will do. It's not really true. We can never substitute for the user. But we have enough knowledge that we can, as we say here, we can predict what they would say, how they would react, because we studied how they did, actually did it in the past. So at this point, OK, OK, I understand it. And understanding what they did, uh, I can also understand their issues, their problems, their pain points. That are the ones that will deserve more study, more specific study, and then probably the features of our application, of our project. We build a project with those, exactly those features that are bothering you today with the current process. So, uh, planning the interview, again, we, we may start for, from the target. Who are we going to interview? Okay, interview is not just the observation where you are free to do the activity, but it follows a set of questions. And this set of questions will be probably, in a way, customized according to the target of this interview. Again, I will put the task leader here, uh, the team leader here, a new student, of course, and maybe a student, a uh, current member that was a uh, member who was involved in selection. At least uh, I, would have, I would like to have a second uh, voice uh, and not just a team leader. I would choose probably two people. Uh, sorry, one step back. We cannot interview 50 people, okay? We have to stand from five or six people, no, no more at this stage. Again, we are trying to make the time, time count, okay? We don't have many weeks of budget. We have only days. Okay. So if I had five people, or six or seven, but this kind of number, who would they select? The team leader? And they would select another person from inside the team that was involved in the process, of course. Because sometimes the team leader is, uh, how to call them, visionary. Okay, they are highly involved in the project, highly invested in the project, and they may in some way lose track with the reality or the actual problem. Okay? They also may have a lot of uh, troubles with the administration and stuff. And so having another person that participates in the onboarding but is not the official leader, I think will give me uh, some more information about the process from a different point of view. It's not worth uh, making interviews to people that are photocopies of each other, okay? That, that thinks and asks and the same role, because you will get the same information twice. So I guess you have five people, you try to five, find five different points of view. Of course, you cannot do any statistics with that, but this is not the goal. You can have different insights and you need to put these insights together in your brain. We are lucky we have a brain. Uh, new students, um, at this point I would send, if, if I had five, I would spend three interviews with new students from different groups, the different uh, subgroups, uh, like we, uh, categories. At the beginning we decided the groups uh, of students 
could be divided by, I don't know, international, national, uh, um, bachelor, master, and so on. At this stage, we are asking ourselves the question, okay, if I have three bullets, where, should, where will I fire them? One master Italian student, one bachelor foreign student, I don't know, we'll, we'll, let's choose, according to the categories we, de we decide. The question, yes? Uh, yeah, so the question was, uh, in organizing interviews, uh, who is going to do interviews, whether it's uh, always the same person or different people in, in your practical uh, project. Okay? You, you are four people in the group, uh, how do you organize? Yeah, it's up to you, basically. Okay? Um, you can do interviews, uh, one first choice is to do interviews uh, uh, with one interviewer or a couple of interviewers. A couple uh, make, usually if you have a couple, one is, do, is actually conducting the questions and the other is just listening and maybe taking notes. Uh, so one is actually following the script of the inter interview, asking questions and so on, and the other one tends to, to stay silent, but to play atten pay attention and take notes. Okay. Uh, the alternative can be done without a second person if you just record and uh, re-listen to it. Okay. I wouldn't use more than two people for doing an interview because that feels aggressive. Okay. You have three or four people and asking question one, like an exam. Okay. Then uh, you need to have the user feel comfortable. Mm -hmm. Then, uh, whether to use the same person, so I have five interviews to, to do, and you talk with her, or do it, or would ask the interviews, or they split the work, okay, I will do two, and you will do three. As long as there's a script of the questions, uh, it doesn't uh, matter too much, okay? Uh, the important part is that all the group will agree on what, we, what information are we trying to get from this interview. And then, of course, different people can do them, maybe also because of logistical reasons. Or maybe you can organize the work. Two people are, go are working on the observation and two people are working on the interviews and they will exchange information in some way. It's, a, it's an internal organization. Um, okay. So what kind of interview are we doing? Uh, an individual interview or a group interview? Hmm? Again, if we are doing five interviews, maybe they should be individual. If you want to gather more people, because maybe we, we, we feel that, that we need more diversity, maybe we don't have the time for interviewing one by one 15 different persons. And so we may have two groups and all the people will be interviewed together as a group. Hmm? Uh, that would be interesting to create a group, uh, uniform group, for example, all new students in a group, or mixed group. A group where we have, you know, the team leader and the new students, uh, or some team responsibles and new students uh, in equal number, three and three, and try to see if there was any friction from the past that, that now they can share. Now it's all in the past. So something that uh, comes out when, uh, you know, the team leader listens to the new students uh, when they tell something that went wrong or, or was difficult for them, and the team leader re realizes that they were not aware of the difficulty, or the other way around, of course. And so from this dynamic of comparing different points of view, you can gain more information. So again, it's not really useful to have the same information many times. It's much more interesting to have different points of view to put together. Hmm? So again, the difference between a one-to-one -one interview or a focus group is basically of numbers. If we can do one-to-one, -one, better. When, the, when we feel that we should interview more users, uh, then of course we need to organize them in groups. In some cases you can, you maybe need more numbers with surveys, but not at this stage probably, because at this stage we don't, uh, 
we won't know which questions are relevant to us in a survey, in an online survey with maybe hundreds or thousands of, of users. Maybe it's a for second round. When we have more clear idea of the functionality we want, we want to uh, implement, uh, and then we can do that. And we can we ask questions uh, uh, for understanding which ones are more important for them. Uh, and then, okay, so once you have the setting, so these are the people that I'm going to interview. We are working in teams of two, one to ask questions and to take notes and so on, and uh, we are going to interview these people one at a time. It comes to, uh, to the point of uh, writing the question, actually. Okay, so we need to write the list of questions uh, and to write the script of the interview. What I'm going to say, what you are going to say, what I'm, the, the poses, the titles, uh, the explanations, at which points I wish I will stop and ask you for comments and so on. It's a, it's a flexible script, okay? Since we are in a one-to-one -one settings, uh, I can decide on the fly of skipping some question or devoting more time to some questions, some topics that they came out in the, our discussion, in your answers, and they feel they're uh, interesting, okay? So I will dig deeper in these specific questions, and I will skip a bit on the others. So it's a flexible script, but you should have a script uh, to follow just to have a, uh, a systematic way of giving this, uh, this interview. Okay, it's not, it's informal, but not totally free. Hmm? Because, uh, again, it's not just uh, getting in touch with the person, but extracting some information from these people, from these users. And we should, we want to, we write the questions because we know which information we are actually trying to get. So writing the question is, a, of course, a, is a tool for making the interview process easier, but especially it's a tool for us to reason about what do I really want to ask you. And it should not be 25 questions. Probably it should be, again, five or seven or you cannot sit for two hours. Um, and uh, tomorrow we work on this, okay? Uh, tomorrow, sorry, on Thursday. We'll try to write some questions on that. And the, the final point uh, I want to comment now is uh, uh, how to keep track of the response. So people are, will, will be replying to me, to my questions, to my discussion, okay? And do I, uh, I should not lose the information. So I can take some paper notes. Maybe, okay, if we are two, it's easier. We can have a video recording or just an audio recording of the interview, of course, with the permission of the person. Uh, in some cases, we can simply take pictures that are not really relevant by me. By me, they help me to understand this person and the feeling when I see the picture of a person, I replay in my mind the feeling I had when I spoke to, to that person, much more than just by reading the name or reading the script. Okay, so are some tools, uh, uh, especially pictures are also useful in the observation phase where they are doing the, the real thing, and you can also observe maybe their expression, and uh, but maybe also during the interview or doing some sketches or whatever, if they're explaining something. So plan how to uh, recall the information. The easiest part is taking paper notes uh, while you speak uh, or taking a video recording. Taking paper notes is more difficult because you need to be, you know, uh, in the moment, you need to be aware that something is interesting and, and write it down. Uh, video seems easier, but it will take more time later because you need to replay all of them and extract information from them. Because if you just record and don't watch them or don't study them, it's not... Uh, useless at all okay so again um, maybe for the first time I would suggest uh, doing a recording and then watching it together maybe in two people and then comparing the, you can play it uh, at twice the speed or whatever you already listen to the person live uh, and uh, you will uh, re listen again and write down the interesting points probably hmm? okay so uh, I will stop here today
and tomorrow we spend uh, some time before starting the next uh, topic we we'll spend some time in trying to write uh, no, sorry, not tomorrow on Thursday I still haven't learned uh, the schedule for this week uh, if you start thinking about uh, what question would you ask uh, then we can maybe write them together next time thank you